the same problem. Uh, uh, we are yeah. open now to your questions. Please. Yeah, I'll speak loud. I'll speak loud. Can you all hear me? Yeah, hang on. I'll be fine. Thanks. I'll be fine. No, no, no. It's all right. Okay. All right. Is that better then? <laughs> for, for recording is the uh, best way. So thank you both for very interesting um, uh, presentations. Everyone is special. Thank you for very interesting presentations. I think that uh, the two presentations speak to each other really very well. Um, as um, uh, Pilar has already identified the links. Um, and in the UK, I am familiar with the context in the UK because I am based uh, in London and I work at the Bartlett and I work in the same uh, lab that uh, uh, Dassault works. And uh, there is, we have a, a, a ministry which is called uh, uh, Leveling Up. And uh, the purpose is to establish balances between and rebalance the inequalities, the distribution of inequalities in society. So my first question is how this research can be really related to policies and whether there can be misfits in the process. So although the researchers and the Horizon program can have the best intentions and provide all the work, the research work that is needed, what happens at the level of policy, particularly when, for example, in the UK, they want to and build new housing in certain areas, then this is voted down and the housing is not really built because it really disturbs the ways in which people live in these areas. They don't want the housing. Mm. Yeah. That's a good, no, no, go. Please. No, please. No, no, no. please. I think you are more... Uh, <laughs> no, yes, you are right. Europe, but I Europe. think this is uh, the main, um, um, I think, challenge can be this transfer to society and then to policies. Uh, I think this um, must be done through education. Education uh, at every level, from the schools to the universities, and of course with uh, different um, uh, activities, um, uh, focusing on society, on social uh, networks, I think, and social agents. If you don't count on this kind of uh, social agents or all social uh, structures as um, associations, uh, for instance, uh, then you can do nothing. So that's why in our uh, research projects in the agency, we, are, uh, we have set a special um, uh, item, and you have to explain how will you transfer your project to society. And then you have to explain well, if you are, have uh, 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 if you have contact with the uh, um, administration, with the uh, local um, local uh, associations, or uh, if you are working in a neighborhood, what, if you know the people, and in what way will you involve the neighborhoods or, or, or people in this uh, in your project? So uh, I think it's a first step. Of course, it's not uh, definite, but I think uh, everything must uh, be done uh, this way uh, because otherwise it's it's isolated as as it is today. Mm -hmm. You're right. End, it, it comes down to political decision. Mm -hmm. Yes, always. Yes. So there is probably it's good to consider the next step as well. But yeah, definitely education is the first one. Education is the first but one, and then you you have to come again. Think local and act uh, global. Uh, global. Yeah. So think that's global, uh, first. Global that's it. First, think local, and then expand your ideas, because I think the lo local powers have a lot to to do in this uh, kind of transfer, social transfer. Even, even though, if I may say something from the UK, and, and Sophia is uh, probably familiar, now the, the problem with the UK, I only know the UK nowadays, uh, is, uh, which is not exactly Europe anymore. No, it's, it's Europe, it's Europe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Europe. I'm joking. As a whole. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. Uh, but the problem with us is that, for example, if you want to build something, a new infrastructure, is pretty much if you ask every architect that is actually building things in a local community, they first check what the the political party of the local community is. 
If it's a left-wing party, you don't build anything. You don't touch anything because there's no, you know, not, not, not much change. If it's a conservatives like, you know, uh, Boris Johnson and worse, then, you know, build whatever you like, you know, just throw money at it. So that's the problem with us. And now I think what the, the, the next, well, the next period for this government is in the UK, which I don't think I agree, of course, I don't agree at all. <laughs> But they want to give a vote to each person in a street. In order, so let's say we want to do like a new, new regeneration project. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know, new playgrounds or whatever, or new, a new theater. Every person, the 50% plus one, they have to vote of the local residents. And this is, I think, where education comes. Of course. Because this course. is going to be even more damaging now You've got 20 politicians, well, political figures, whatever, weirdos, that they don't know about architecture, think that they know about architecture, and they say, no, we don't need more regeneration because it's a classical area or whatever. And, it's not. and then now you've got even better. You've got 20 different people that they've got a house there, and you, it might look weird near their house, and they, you know it's pretty expensive in London, so you don't play around with millions like this. So I think this is where education, but I think the, 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 the problem is education. There's a structural problem, the property values are such that there is no housing. And yes, the, true. The, the government has failed to really deliver housing mm -hmm. for more than 40 years. And the property values are going up. But you so, have local residents, because if you ask me, right, I've got a house, I, I, I you know, I have a loan, I've got a mortgage, you know. <laughs> so in the end, if, you, if someone wants to build like a high rise with affordable housing near you in London, you'll be like, what does this do to my property? So of course, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm probably, let's consider myself an educated person, but the majority we have to educate them. I mean, I think this is the number one problem, is yes. how, how you educate the people without educating them in a way, like forcing yes, them yes, to do yes. something, yes. like uh, some sort of, Ideological, yeah, it's not an ideological education. No, no, of course, education. of course, no, what you said is, is complete. Yeah, an education on, 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 on values. Yes, that's the, yeah. important. And I think the, the power of uh, neighbors is more uh, than we can, than maybe we mm -hmm. can imagine. It's but okay. uh, they have to be uh, associated. Yeah, and, uh, brought, brought into the game, way. exactly, yeah, associated. It's important really to bring the political dimension in our research and be aware. Mm -hmm. of the politics involved in the calculation of networks, for example. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to understand that. Uh, that's something extremely, extremely hard to do, I yeah. think. It's extremely yeah. hard to do. And not but it is, I mean, through the demographics, uh, especially now with the experience probably we all had the last, I don't know how many years, since 2016, was the, the Trump era. And the, oh. the way that, no, not only the but Trump as a Trump, but the way that we've seen uh, um, a reinforcement learning being used in Facebook and how to train you to vote towards a particular pattern. So this is a reinforcement learning exercise for, for Facebook. And if you've been in conferences where, you know, Facebook conferences, you see what sort of papers they come out from Tom Brad, at least earlier before the, before the, what was the Oxford, uh, uh, the, I think the Oxford Cambridge problem? Analytica. The Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica, Analytica. sorry. I'm, <laughs> the Cambridge Analytica thing. Even before that, the, the papers came coming out from the Facebook conferences and conferences like that, they were all about, you know, what sort of uh, advert they can give you. So step by step, they train you to do something. It's your brain is a neural network, you know. They they will fake it. They will make it do whatever they want in the end. If if you if you look at Facebook every day, so I think that's another. We need to understand that's a very complex. Uh, Can I thing. ask another question? I don't want to dominate the conversation. Pilar, about the common European identity, I wonder whether you can explain that a little bit more. What it means? It means that uh, Europe. Uh, the, uh, uh, um, Europe is a, a mixture of, uh, of uh, cultures, of uh, people that have come from 
uh, sometimes from uh, long away countries, so uh, different cultures. Uh, at this moment, we have uh, the, the immigrants are important. It's important to make them feel as uh, European citizens, <coughs> not to feel outside outsiders or not to feel uh, uh, in the margin, in the, the verge of this um, of society, because this uh, leads to um, always leads to problems. So uh, they want to integrate by means of culture. Culture is the ba is on the basis of integration. So it's not only of education in this. Uh, this I am not talking of education at this moment. I am talking about uh, feeling proud, feeling a part of your uh, society, feeling a part of your neighborhood, of your town. If you feel uh, that you belong to a place, uh, you have mm, mm, lots of opportunities to um, uh, to be included in this uh, in, the, in this society. Uh, otherwise, it's really difficult. And the only the only way is to through culture to to take into account every different uh, uh, religion uh, habit. A cultural habit, and not to uh, to set margins or limits to this uh, kind of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, behavior behaviors, because it's um, it's the only way to feel uh, to feel. Th I think the the key word is to feel uh, that you belong to to a place. This is the key concept, and that's what we have to. Uh, to achieve, if we want to, uh, I, um, an integrated European society. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, I would like to add um, something about the education uh, um, uh, extension that you mentioned. Um, it's also about the structure of the, um, uh, regarding uh, knowledge tra transfer from academic uh, uh, environments to professional uh, um, uh, bodies and uh, local management, for instance, is, is also a, a challenge of, uh, first, how to create careers for PhD in those institutions, for instance. Most of the PhD, at least in Portugal, the pattern is to have an academic career and not a professional one. So how to integrate PhDs in professional bodies and in political bodies, etc. Mm -hmm. And most of most important in this one is how to uh, reset uh, structure, the leadership and the, the way of uh, incorporate those PhD in very static organizations. For instance, we have I work in a municipality uh, and uh, regarding technicians in municipality are kind of a task of some features. So if you, if you hire a PhD to be a tasker, you will be not motivating yeah. this person that was trained to think about problems and how to handle with problems and to evolve to solutions. He will have a, 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 a boss, a chief, whatever, saying like this, you know, and uh, uh, so, for me, this is one challenge: is how to reset the structure of these uh, um, local management bodies, uh, professional bodies, uh, industrial bodies, etc. To learn how to incorporate the value that the PhD uh, collaborator can introduce in the way things are do uh, uh, or can be done in those uh, institutions in in one in, in the first step, and then the even the difficult step is to make understand political bodies the, the contribution that that, that that person that is is trained is trained to think can uh, bring to decisions they can make. So political bodies they have to learn that they they they, they can have really good contributions from these kind of um, technicians that are highly uh, skilled that are highly specialized and and, and trained to think. And um, uh, uh, evolve from uh, four cycle, four year cycles decisions, 
because as you said, some of these things that you present, they really work. They have some continuity. And, and some of the executives, political executives, they think in four years uh, cycles, because it's when people are going to work. So they think about uh, what is going to work in these four years. And sometimes the solutions you want to prepare and those PhDs to which can give to you. It's, it's not solution for four years, it's for eight, 12, 16 years. So it will be something that you, as a political executive body, will implement. But the results, it won't be that executive body to, to get. So they thought, what's the point for me to do this if I'm not going to get the results in four years? In, in 12 years, I, I won't be here anymore. So why do do that? So the thing, it's not only about the education. So about education, yeah. Yeah, but the, 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 the meeting point between academic and these different bodies that need to know how to get this improvement that PhD contributors, PhD person, PhD people that are trained to think can bring to the, to the, to the institution. If not, I'm not bring, I have a PhD on my city hall, I have a PhD on my company, I have a PhD on my fabric and my industry. He's doing a regular technician, technique uh, job. So what's the point for him to be a, a PhD? I will pay him more for doing the exactly the same thing that a technician would, would do? No, so I, I won't hire him. So I will hire a regular technician. So this kind of thinking, the way of thinking, how we can incorporate the value that PhD brings to what we are doing is something that we need to learn about and then again to close the cycle to teach leaders uh, about that because I don't think sometimes leaders really understand the, um, the, the how good or how uh, uh, the, uh, contribution a, a PhD person can bring to to, to, to to the institution or to the company or whatever. So I think this is um, something that must go both ways from the academic too, but also to from the, 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 the professional and the political bodies to the them and, and learn how to merge and to to to, to take the best of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, do you want to but I think you I think he covered pretty much himself in, in a way because <laughs> the, 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 the in the end yeah. the political figures only care about what will happen now and what will happen not not, not only now in the, in the UK, I, I, again, the example is that they care where the opening ceremony of, the, of this thing that you're building now will be. So there is, I mean, in the UK, you don't have to, the, the bribing is, is white, it's not black, it's not under the table, it's not like a, a Greek or s Southern European, it's not under the table, it's open, you sign the document, the opening, of course, the politician will tell you that the opening of this new... So when you build, when you build a new housing uh, complex, okay, what you, you go to the local community, to the local council, and you say, okay, I'll, you'll give me the permission to do this, and I will do the public space of this and a public artwork there. For the two public artwork, or like the public, I don't know, um, the playground and the artwork, I want them to be open that day because in three months is the elections. If it's before, so if it's not their time frame, then they're not going to give it to you. I mean, so you said it all. I mean, you've already answered your question, but this is it. It's like a, it's that's magic. You have to, it has to happen it, that day because it has to have get the publicity. So I don't know for the PhD. I'm not even sure what they would get back if you get a better PhD. I mean, they probably know. I don't think every politician is, is, is uh, I don't want to use any politically incorrect word, no, but it's, it's not, not smart, let's say. But it's a question of how, to, yeah. how to get the best of it in this kind of very static structure. It, it, it flows, it flo slowly moves. Slowly, I slowly. I think you are talking about uh, uh, a silent revolution, yeah. or not so silent, silent. Yeah. but it's, it's needed. Anyway, I can tell you uh, an anecdote. When I was, uh, uh, until a couple of years ago, oh, I was a member of an assembly 
that is uh, every university has uh, an assembly of this kind that is called the Consejo Social, the Social Council, which is the one that it's um, an assembly that controls the uh, the um, uh, and not only the, the monetary questions, but also other questions. And in this uh, assemblies, we are uh, not only academics, but um, industrials and politics. And it's really uh, uh, upsetting to notice that each one talks its own language. Yeah. And they don't understand each other. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable, and and I don't I don't know why, because it's maybe it's because their interests are are not uh, are not the same at the end are not the same as you said before they they have politicians have very have uh, crystal clear what they need or what they want uh, industrials know what they want too and and uh, a slight approach is the industrial PhD. A slight approach, and then uh, um, uh, the professors and teachers have another, and even students have another language, and they don't understand that academy cannot be uh, give the back to this to society. They are really well uh, well uh, prepared. They have. Uh, uh, they, they are brilliant, but at the end they are brilliant. Um, but uh, is it is this really what uh, society needs? In they are brilliant. In what what for are you brilliant? And that's uh, another language. So I think um, um, we have to. Uh, um, we say we have to. Um, uh, to make a, um, a, I think um, a, a, we have to teach each other what we need, and to make know the others what our interests are, and of course the academic, the academic structure is really uh, old. I think it has to be upside down and needs a deep change, but who wants to? make it? What rector do you know that will <laughs> go on this way? So <laughs> he will end in the guillotina. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would like to make a question to pass to... Uh, but before I I would, I would not be feel right if I, don't, I didn't uh, say this. I don't consider me an European, but a citizen of the world. My place is all places. <laughs> so I have a very strong doubt about integration in a place, integration in a culture. Uh, when, uh, well, you, we know that it is, it's uh, uh, in the background, integration in the best place, integration in the best culture. That is a very European uh, colonial thinking that we live in the, the vast world. Uh, and, uh, well, Tassos. We don't live in the best world. Okay, Tassos. <laughs> Uh, we should. We should. No, no, I mean the European. I mean, Europe is not. I mean, there are so many beautiful okay. places. I, this okay. is a very long question, very long discussion. I, I prefer to talk it uh, later when we are eating something. Tassos. <laughs> 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 uh, space syntax began to be a theoretical idea and then creative methodologies to solve a great set of uh, problems that uh, architects uh, use. Uh, uh, often. Mm -hmm. What you are uh, dealing with now, your research, uh, I, I don't doubt you will arrive there, but uh, the treatment of uh, big data to create patterns, is it possible to create also the theories 
that the space syntax is and uh, how long or uh, how difficult it will be. And this is the first uh, part of the question. The second is that when will we be able to use those uh, well, you can use them now. Uh, to, to, to arrive to uh, concrete, uh, uh, practical problems yeah. and uh, assist my... Okay. <laughs> my yeah, no, no, I think, uh, so, first of all, yeah, uh, uh, as I started with uh, Space Syntax, you know, you had uh, your, your early maps and you had your early problems, let's say, and the Space Syntax found certain solutions uh, to to the problem very fundamental and I'm not I, I think I, I I still what, what everything I I had in my presentation fundamentally uh, had th theories and ideas that probably you know even Bill could talk to me about this in in, in the essence right uh, where I re I realized at some point that I started slowly running out of you know, as you simplify, the, the early stages of space syntax was about trying to find a map, analyze the map with, uh, with not much fast computing, right? So you had to aggregate things as, as we aggregate the shortest path and everything else. Aggregate down and discard a lot of things and aggregate down to a single floating point number, right? So that this is where I started w working with models that the explain, well, try to understand the micro detail of space around you. Space, space index is all about, you know, how you navigate your space around you, uh, what is the kind of the, the integration value. It's just the value of how it is on average from your point to, to, to navigate to all other points in the system. In the closest vicinity of, let's say, 500 meters, 1,000 meters, this is what typically it's done. Um, so I think the first part of your question ended with uh, what can be done with this, what was, so if you, with, with a data set like this. Yes, the theory is that you can create with. Yes, okay, there's some of the examples I gave you is, method, is already created methodologies. Of course, I started with, my, my lecture had two, two parts. One, how you can uh, decompose urban data, so massive scale urban data, and try to understand the, the, the topogeometric top similarities. And then how you can do a similar thing with three-dimensional data in a city, probably as we saw with uh, the third presentation. I didn't know that Google is, is going to be doing uh, uh, point cloud uh, data. I think the third presentation in the first session had uh, like an example about that. But in a similar sense, You've got this data, and then what you can, can you do with this, right? You can do transfer learning. You can do a lot of stuff, and we've done that with trying to identify patterns of a continuity, so cluster continuity in London, and you try to match it. For example, in the UK, there's this big discussion about the south way, uh, uh, north-south divide, right? The old powerhouse in, the, in England, has been like probably dismantled and the, you know we've got Liverpool, um, Manchester and other places going down with you know in terms of everything right and London becomes a bit more problem prominent. So one of the things you can do practical like methodological and theoretical innovations with something like this is you build a mass deep learning models, non deep statistical models it doesn't have to be everything about you know, ML and you know we throw throw smart smart phrases at it and it works. No, it it can be more more of a linear statistical, not a linear, but let's say more of a data analysis kind of a situation, not a deep learning black box situation. But you can do transfer learning. You can learn from the patterns you see, including all the data of the probably the five clusters that uh, Pillar uh, categorized them. Every cluster so health health has another data set that can be matched with the topogeometry. And the, when I say local, you, you, you're very, uh, very versed on that. The locality is always a variable. So you, you, up, you up the scale, you go back down the locality or up the locality, let's say, and the local becomes even bigger. You can couple it with data from every of the uh, clusters. six clusters. I don't remember how many you had. Like, 
six clusters, and then you can build a model where you can start seeing whether this pattern has something or you, whether you can transfer easily or you with minor changes that can happen in Manchester, for example. I'm not, you know, I'm giving you a random example now. Whether you can start building relations and see, you know, do transfer learning as I, as I call it. So there are a lot of things. Most of the things I, I, I said in my kind of examples, there are methodologies that we apply now, I apply now, and, uh, and it is part of the theory. The theory becomes the, I mean, agent decomposition is on its own, like a, like a theory and methodology to deal with data. And I think the future, what I wanted to, to point out is not, at the moment, is not just the methodologies. We need to rethink about how we manage all these new models mm -hmm. And I play with this kind of dimensionalities. Other people play with all the, you know, demographical, social security, uh, distribution of food. I mean, the last one was about agriculture. The distribution of food, and I, I've, I've got one, one project to show you, if you like. The distribution of food in the UK, and we've got this uh, food deserts. There is an index uh, in the UK that we analyze with complex, and a number of data there which is the, the food desert index, which is how, how close you are from certain supermarkets or distribution of good food. And that's super related, of course, with health, number one. Most of, most of, the, most of the, uh, the, the late uh, outro projects that I showed, they do have health data there. They, all of them have health data because it's associated with space. The access to green space, for example, is related to your health. So this is... This is where I was going. I was, I'm trying to get people to understand that we need to look again, go back, not to GIS anymore maybe. GIS was the trend, but now we need a bit more like hardcore uh, data, <laughs> databases and data sets and, and data structures. I'm, a, you know, I'm half a computer scientist, so my brain <laughs> likes to play around with the data structure of the particular set and then create the methodology. I hope I covered you. But. There's one thing uh, you said, it's, uh, it's important, it's another way of thinking, because uh, uh, intelligent, uh, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, deep learning can uh, produce results without creating theory. Mm -hmm. And this is completely uh, different of what we were... Uh, uh, correct, correct. Because I... science, what uh, science did was Picking data, constructing constructing a theory, and then apply that theory to another similar situation. Mm -hmm. And now with the deep learning, we can depart from data and solve concrete problems without knowing what we are doing. Well. <laughs> and yeah. that is very uh, stressing for me. It is, it is <laughs> stressing for me. And, and I'm, I'm sorry if, if, if you are using uh, GANs or, or generative adversarial networks, but there is a big trend that you get a GAN that someone made, like <laughs> uploaded on GitHub. The GAN is trained, so the whole network is trained by faces of cats and dogs. And then I've seen people, you know, they take a facade of buildings, they, take, they, they push it through the network, you know, and then they get another facade. And they say, this is, this is a new methodology in theory. Yeah, we've seen it, we all seen it. But yeah, of course, I mean, they're good and bad, you know, they're good and bad cars, probably, so I, yeah. So I, I, I'll make, I'm, I'm the bad, I'm the gut car. No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not pointing any fingers, eh? <laughs> no, I have to say that I precisely um, want to say something now, because I strongly agree with what, what you are talking about right now. You know, I studied with Tassos, like, too many years ago, and one of the, the, the main knowledge that I obtained that I'm still nowadays um, applying is that do not play. Start from scratch, understand the methodology, and then as an architect you will see how to come, how revise it and use it. And you know, so many years ago we had that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different, you know, out there in the media, architects that are playing 
tools that make it easy for you to play with the neighbor network, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, you are, like, you just don't care about the match, let's see when it comes out, you know, maybe it's a cool facade. You know what I mean? So, precisely I want to say what? that here, the time is going on right now. Yeah. And, you know, I know we are weirdos, still kind of weirdos, the one that we have been trying to understand computation methodologies, intelligent, let's say, from for the last years. Um, for us, it's really a strange that suddenly a tool comes out that is simplifying a fully complex mathematical process. And, you know, they are just using it for, getting, for obtaining new results that like uh, amazing formal uh, outcomes. But the ones that are being published, and that are the magazines, they are then. Yeah? Why? And why is that? In my opinion, that is because we as architects, we need a cool interface, we need a cool final image that we can understand. You know? It, it, my, it, it doesn't develop a mathematical methodology that is really useful for whatever, or he's showing a nice image or a nice interface to the architect, or just, you know, abstract research, abstract mathematical research related to architecture. And that doesn't go to the media. But the play is a tool. You know, that like it's allowing you to create a new facade with a neural network with no scientific basis at all, that goes to the media. And that is related precisely to what you were saying. And it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, but I think we are... Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, she is one of the examples of a, a very early AI in architecture, where as a student, she was taught to do like a simple perceptron, like a simple network with just one output and eight inputs. Like this, this was the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time, we didn't have any deep, deep networks and anything. But she learned this, and it was the fundamental thing to do. And I think still we need to do this kind of training and don't don't throw like a because because we you know but we do we do I mean the, the history does circles in many in many areas now but in 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 science and and, and architecture I think you know ten years ago the big thing for for first year architects was the discovery that on Grasshopper you can do a uh, 3D Voronoi uh, uh, yeah. geometry, and then random reduce it, eh? and then it was a building. So that was the architecture for the year one and year two. Every every <laughs> professor that teaches year one and year two, they know that you know this. This is a random Voronoi thing. Now, okay, we passed that infant infancy infancy yeah infancy stages. Now we ask for a bit more. So, okay, I'm probably an infant in the next generation of things, so I have to also play around with... <laughs> so I think it goes, it comes and goes, there's like, like there, there's, you know, now everyone uses guns, probably, yeah, I don't, I, we had discussions with, uh, that I cannot say the names, like last week there were discussions in the school with some, some very big names in, in deep learning, uh, they have banned internally the use of guns, pretty much. I, they said, like, we don't use guns. That's it. And it's one of the, the creators of everything. And they, they said, like, we're not going to do that anymore. That was the, the essence, probably. I'm, not, I'm, not para I'm paraphrasing here. But, yeah, it, it, it comes and goes, and we have to be visual as well. Eh? I mean, the, in the end, yeah, you have to, be, you have to come up with something that uh, attracts the eye of an architect. I'm a computing engineer as well, so I can play around with, uh, you know, I play around with code more than visual stuff all day. Uh, but that's not, uh, that's not the norm sometimes. It's a, also an easy way to do things, to put a machine trying to discover something with uh, all the data in the world. Well, frankly, <laughs> though, just, just to uh, back my ass a bit, uh, none, of, none of this is... Uh, there's no gun there, there's no generative. I've, I have, I've done some generative models with a variation auto autoencoders, so, so it's not exactly a gun. But what I've seen, I've shown is purely statistical or mathematical. The answer is the same every time. It's not, there's no fuzziness, there's no kind of uh, randomization process. So it's like a pure... It's a mathematical model in the end. You remember it's some years ago I asked you... Oh. I yes, asked you, if, uh, many things you've got. Yeah. Oh, if, if Newton uh, okay, had yes. uh, uh, a neural network uh, 
uh, introduced with uh, introduced or used uh, the deep learning with uh, Copernicus uh, yeah. and Kepler's data, would you uh, would he ever arrive to the gravitation law? <laughs> yes, because in the end he used a neural network. In here. The most important. Yes, but, uh, yeah, it's exactly the same logic. Yes, it was your answer. And ah, it, that, it, it was, that was my answer. Huh? Yes. Well, uh, very, very predictable. Okay. okay. I don't know. What do you think? Would, would compare with, so I think the question was if Newton uh, and Copernicus and who else, you know, a couple of big names had. No, used Copernicus the and. Uh, and Kepler. And Kepler, yes. Yeah, they, the, they used uh, full the books of uh, that uh, with uh, positions own, of the, their own, what, what do you think would happen? Own, uh, 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 I, I think they would happen the same. <laughs> I think it's natural <laughs> progression. Yeah, but but I, uh, according to what you said, that you 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 stress the importance of image for architects, and it's our fault because mm. we are trendy as cooks. And so we are a kind of, uh, uh, I don't know how to say. Uh, the cool guys. Uh, yeah, cool people. <laughs> yeah. It's our fault. We, we look for it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's art. After, it's half art, let's say. OK, we, I, I don't know. In, in, most, in most backgrounds, a school of architecture is highly artistic, so of course it's highly visual. Yeah. So it's part of our, our, and our visual, life. Visual and this results. is a good thing. I think this is a good thing because I think that's why I think we are good in understanding patterns through you know visual cues, the patterns in the city, the complexity of a city. That's that's uh, they are all uh, yeah. are they all visual? I think sound plays another role as well uh, in terms of understanding like the closeness, the kind of the shape of space, yeah, but I think if, it's visual. If image has a solid basis, otherwise it's just publicity. Mm -hmm. well, I, I would like to, to know your opinion, Pilar. Uh, at least in Portugal, architecture is uh, it's very difficult to fund research for architecture because mm -hmm. Uh, the well, the, most of the funding goes to technical engineering and so on because of uh, what you said, uh, immediate uh, uh, interest of the uh, in, of the industry uh, uh, and the new products and so on. Architecture always uh, goes in the humanities. They don't produce, uh, and uh, this is the first uh, problem. And when uh, technical well, you know, we are in formal methods in architecture. We propose something to the panel of architecture, but they are the, the humanistic guys. So they, oh, this is very technical. <laughs> so uh, we are uh, put apart from one side and from the other. <laughs> well, it depends on the it depends on the focus. Of course, they are uh, pure humanistic research. But there are also uh, mixed research, and this must go to the uh, mixed committees uh, related with uh, technologies. <coughs> For instance, when you have a project that uh, has to do with museums or with art or art exhibition at the end or uh, any kind of uh, diffusion of art, then you need this kind of intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, tools. Uh, or at least you need applets to show or to develop interfaces, different data to be shown. So that's a, 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 the background must be technical, but it's not. Uh, this doesn't uh, exclude at all the humanistic perspective. So I think the future is in the in the combination in the mixed. Yeah. Uh, teams you and think uh, European uh, programs uh, are not uh, against uh, humanity? Not at all. Not no, at all. I think they're not better than. They're, I think they're better than uh, what we've got at least in the UK. I think uh, the the horizon is a bit more open to to giving uh, diverse teams. But I think it's exactly what you said. Is the combination of teams? I think they mm -hmm. they want to build three or four different universities working together yeah. from different schools. Are they more happy to fund 
architecture okay there's there's no way for a, for an architect to get a grant for the, the, in the same amount as a as a medical scientist biologist mm, micro, micro engineer biology. everything not even but you know we are we're at the bottom we're scraping <laughs> maybe before maybe before arts and humanities or something you know like the, 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 <laughs> at the bottom down there but i think what the the from my understanding of um, of uh, Horizon Europe, European EC uh, packages, uh, they're one of the best ones to to go for as a team, as a team of more hardcore engineers and architects, and I and they're more open. I think this is a culture within yeah, a the new mentality. Yeah. yeah, it's true because uh, the days of the single researcher alone at home or at their uh, desk are over, mm -hmm. completely over. So I think uh, you, it's uh, a, a part, uh, an important part of our work is to show that what is coming and they cannot remain in the past. So what you have said, it's true, but it's only half true because uh, the, the future is in, um, in this uh, multitask, multidisciplinary mm -hmm. teams and net, uh, scientific networks. If you want to be in the in the real world, if you want to work alone and make fantasies, it's your problem. That's another question. That, that's why it's not bad, even though I'm just I sometimes make fun of it. It's not bad that architects and more traditional architects play around with technologies and ideas that maybe they don't. Not, you know, they don't understand it. But, you know, they haven't done computer science. They haven't done any an engineering. Maybe some of them, right? It's okay to play with some tools, I think, without playing and breaking and even making like a, like j jokes to other people that are like, you know, kind of a bit more intelligent in terms of um, uh, machine learning or whatever. I don't, I don't see it as a problem. Apart from the f making fun of it, I think playing with tools and drawing with different, I mean, I'm, when I, we first start drawing in early years, I, I don't think I was good. You, you play around with the colors, you mess. It's a learning process. Learning how to use, uh, use deep learning systems is a learning process for your brain. But our brains, the, the evolutionary uh, process, the biological evolutionary process, takes 10,000, I don't know what's the equivalent, but they say it's like a 10,000... Thousand years for a single word in a book. In if 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 the book is your gene, your genome, I think it takes like millions of years to elevate your your brain yeah. activity to maybe even understand what the technology is now. The forty, I mean, you know, in the last how many years we've seen a boom in everything that has to do with computing. So mm -hmm. architects need to catch up as well, and we have to be a bit more open in. Uh, and playing around with ideas that they don't have, always start with the found theoretical foundation because I don't know whether if Newton was sitting under the tree had the fo fo uh, theoretical foundation, he just got the you know he got the apple and then it became a theoretical foundation. And no? and that was I think a better answer than the last one. And Kepler was clo closer to Ptolemeo than yeah, yeah. than he thought that it was he was. <laughs> no, that's that's the call for food. Ah, no, sorry. <laughs> it's not really a question, just a small remark. I strongly agree with you about playing with tools because sometimes when you use a tool, let's say in the wrong way, you can come up with an innovative use or something that the creator didn't think of mm. because probably the one who created the tool thinks in a more linear way based mm -hmm. on the scientific background, but then if you draw this tool to students or to children mm -hmm. even, mm -hmm. then they may come up with something so novel that is worth revisiting the tool yeah. to find new new features of it. So it's breaking the system. Yes, it's breaking the yeah yeah yeah. So thanks very much for this. Uh, that's that's the that's I think that's the purpose of doing research is breaking what is what exists there and but even breaking like the you know I've been. Space syntax is feeding me for years, but we have to break it. If, if it's possible, we might find something like something better or something different. So you have to try to break the system from the inside if you can. That's the, yeah, of course.
please. Okay. You know, this, it has these metrics, topological and otherwise, um, which help us find patterns in space. Mm -hmm. But then if we would like to carry out, like, uh, integrate other areas, like health or economics, some other stuff. I was wondering, uh, how are these uh, correlation exercises going on? I understand in the past there was some idea about technology or like, yeah, like criminal trends or, or maybe uh, some other social phenomena or um, uh, pointing out different lifestyles where we could um, go back to the motivations of architecture mm -hmm. and then uh, understand how these geometrical compositions affect mm -hmm. those. Um, I don't know if uh, in the latest years there has been research about some social phenomena that might be explained by... A lot, a lot, a lot. I'm not, I'm not presenting, I think, probably Sophia will show even like closer to what you're asking, uh, a bit more um, uh, closer to what you're saying, but it's been a lot of work. I mean, I'm, I'm not really... My research is not that linked to that aspect of space. In space syntax, of course, has established like, uh, like a lot of ideas about... Uh, how all these patterns translate back to the social integration, the phenomena of, I don't know, violence, a lot of things. Uh, but it's not what my specialization is. So, yes, we do have, uh, we do have colleagues in, in the Space Syntax Laboratory that they work with uh, uh, health buildings, exactly like the, the um, uh, patterns in hospitals, uh, even, Infection, transmission, infectious transmission stuff mm -hmm. in hospitals. We do, we do have a lot of that. But I'm not an expert. To, I don't even know if I, if I. Yeah. yeah. Activity is collected, and then it's statistically correlated to the spatial measures, mm. and that gives you an understanding of how space and society relate together. So, for example, a very. Um, uh, a, 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 a very strong result of years of analysis is that people tend to gravitate towards the, the roads, the, ah. the line segments, the street segments that have a strong position, a powerful position in the configuration of network. Mm -hmm. So there is a very strong correlation indicating that uh, spatial patterns and movement patterns of people correlate. Uh, so Bill Hillier that came up with this uh, finding established the theory of natural movement say that the layouts of natural movement patterns. And it's not that uh, people move towards the specific land uses and functions, but because these uh, spatial patterns uh, facilitate uh, movement patterns, it's people that uh, gravitate towards these points, and then that attracts um, uh, attractors, let's say, attracts land uses. And that has a multiplier effect then. Mm -hmm. And yeah. similar kind of... Uh, um, Correlations can look at uh, special patterns and health patterns. Mm -hmm. um, there are colleagues about the look at mobility and um, crime uh, because uh, segregated uh, spaces away from busy areas might facilitate, let's say, crime. Uh, crime patterns can correlate mm -hmm. with those. It's more complex now what I'm describing mm -hmm. and so on. So I don't know if that explains the answer to the question. Yeah. Um I think it does. Uh, I, I know some of these uh, like general ideas, but yeah, I was wondering like uh, how far there it goes, like in, in many other areas. I in, 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 it goes very far in, in many, many areas. I think if you, if, you, if you go to Google Scholar and type space syntax health or space syntax uh, know, immigration, it. yeah. Or even we've got people that work crime, or or, or uh, we've got people that work in Middle East, for example. So there are certain areas that have also different kinds of problems, uh, um, you know, different kinds of cities. New, I mean, you can find research, quite established research, about building new cities from the ground up, 
building uh, re repositioning parts of the city, uh, you know, um, yeah. What else? And we work a lot with questionnaires. So data sources are very varied, so you can find many different uh, um, uh, uh, ways to mix these two uh, ways of, uh, of uh, um, implementing um, this space syntax data. Yeah, maybe a good point for GIS. I, I understand there. Yes, but GIS, as, as you said, it's, it was the first step. So now it's we are uh, we have advanced a lot. I, I'm still working with GIS. I, I am as confess, well. I am, I I am as well in most cases. Working. But yeah, it's uh, the data GIS. complexity in the end gets you. Yeah, yeah you have you many dimensions to yeah. associate to a particular mm -hmm. element. Well, it's lunchtime. You wanted to ask us. Oh, so. cool. Yes, lunchtime. Okay. Yeah. Thank I you. Think it's, uh, Thank you very much. Class for the lunchtime.